Well, hello there, humans of these other things, wherever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel and Bushkin. There's going to be a heap of tank content coming your way this week, so do not switch channels. Uh, I've been playing the brand spanking new Tier 10 Monster Machine, this thing, and I couldn't get any good games. Uh, and lo and behold, someone sent me in a really, really good game. So we're going to feature that one today, uh, and I'm also going to give you a word from our sponsors. Take it away, Bushka. Today's video is sponsored by Mech Arena, and I want to give this game a huge shout out. I've been playing this a fair bit lately, and the reason I've been playing it is it's just an awful lot of fun, and it's got a lot of the elements that I love about Blitz. It's fast-paced, it's quick games, and it's got a huge array of different mechs or the vehicles that you're running around, uh, and different weaponry and upgradable parts and pieces, and different... Like, you can play as an attack mech like this where you're actually doing damage and you've got the missile launcher and you've got a big plasma cannon or you can be a support mech like this where I'm running a heal that's on a cooldown, keeping my team in the game, doing damage where I can, trying not to get focused because I'm not a big tanky kind of mech and I'm going to get blown up if I try and capture points as the lead, tip of the spear element and it's just a lot of fun. Uh, and there's lots of different modes, like control point capture, 5v5, 2v2 deathmatch. You can play in tournaments. Uh, you can play solo, play with your buddies. Um, you can play with people from all over the world. It's just surprising to find a game like this, which blends so many varied elements, available and not being talked about more. You can see here, I'm healing my team while holding a corner. Uh, getting assists, but not really doing the big kills and just keeping the enemy team from pushing this cap point. And I really love that. It's very tactical. Um, you have pilots in the game. The best pilot right now is Neymar Jr. All you got to do to get him for free is to log in a Mech Arena and play seven different days between now and December 18. And he's completely free. And uh, he allows you to do all kinds of crazy things like sprint more often and do more damage. Uh, all kinds of boosts is great. I love this kind of gameplay. Look how tactical this is. So I'm just, I've got a big mech next to me who does a lot of damage and I'm just picking off and kill stealing at the end and hitting heals as they try and push the middle focal point. It's just absolutely massive. Um, it's completely free to play. It's on Android and iOS uh, and you can use the link below, my personal link to get a free starter pack. I valued at 30 bucks. You get a skin, a crate and 5,000 credits. Uh, and yeah, if you're quick, you can add me to my friends. This is my profile here, and we can maybe have a rip and a roar. Um, I'll see you out there. Anyway, odds with the videos, and thanks very much to Mech Arena for uh, letting me have a crack at this one. On to the feature presentation. I tried to get video of this tank for ages, as we see our mate Yahusha. Uh, he's got a long name, but we're just going to call him the Big Y. The big Y is heading to the middle of the map, which is kind of a, a regular spot for a TD with a turret. This tank, to me, don't get me wrong, it is counted as a tank destroyer, but it feels way more like the TD version of a Kranwagen than it does a standard kind of big gun. Uh, it's because it's not a high alpha gun and it's got a very, very strong frontal armor profile, but the real haymaker for this thing is obviously the way you use the shelves. I had a massive issue with getting games for this tank, and I have played quite a few games in it while I've been on tour here uh, in Lithuania for the Blitz Ultimate Cup. The problem I had wasn't that I didn't understand that the third shell should only be used in case of emergencies. It was a twofold problem with the third shell. One, I would start reloading uh, the second shell, and I would say, I'm not going to press the button again to fire this third shell and then someone would swing by that was a one shot and I'd think oh I've got to take that shot and sure I might clear the tank in the in the, I mean in the worst scenarios not only would I fire the last shell I'd also miss and I wouldn't clear the tank and then my DPM would be in the pooper but the other thing that I screwed up too was I tried to time it so that I was hitting that shell as it reloaded and in tight situations, you can lose track, especially if you're old and bad at the game. And I would put my DPM in the pooper. So it was somewhat of a blessing in disguise when my amigo, the big Y, sent me this game, Yahusha, ha, 
Mashashusha, whatever your name is. Uh, my good friend, thank you very much for sending this in, by the way. If you are sending videos in, bushkagaming at gmail.com, I've got a great Shamira game coming up as well. The animation on this thing is beautiful. The heavy flank here is where we've gone, but you might note there is an E75 on the inside rail of the heavy flank, just side scraping there. Well, you might think he's side scraping. Some would call it side scraping, some would call it side snoring, because it appears that he is dormant and gone to a better place in the big game in the sky, which is putting a lot of pressure on my amigo here who's just lost his buddy in the IS-8 to hold this flank. Now, that's a tank that is built for holding flanks as a TD. Not only has it got a turret, but it can really stop some shots. And that 183 should have known better than to poke out again, again with that animation, which is absolutely gorgeous. The art department's obviously knocked this one out of the park. It looks incredible. And he's already moved on to 2.5K. We've uh, got about half the game left to go, and we're a gun up. So we're thinking maybe we push through, but this is not an easy tank to push through on flanks. You take a lot of damage on side shots. I mean, most tanks will, but with the turret situated so far forward over the tracks, that is an awfully big profile to be shooting at. It does, however, have a lovely dose of the alphas, and you can see there as he gets rid of the TP. Uh, or rather, he's about to. Here we go. Oh, nice bounce. Nothing wrong with a bit of bouncing. And things are actually a little bit tougher than they see because, oh, oh, this is where I'd be in trouble. See how there's that one red shell left? I would have fired that. I would have fired that, and I would have died to this 60 TP. He's, look at the, look at the, just so much, so much patience. And the DPM thing, as he moves on to 4.5K nearly, it's so important, being able to maintain trigger discipline so that you don't end up absolutely getting yourself rocked and socked is a really, oh, turret rings are for wonderful people as the animation blows up again. Five kills, two tanks to go. There's a Rass in the offing here. He's already at 5,000 damage. Things could be very, very good. Our mate, the E75, is still holding that heavy line like a champion, and there is every chance that we're coming away a winner. Don't worry, boys and girls. I'm not going to spoil the ending, but things could happen. <laughs> I don't know. Is that spoiling the ending? Maybe it is. I'm not certain. Let's get back to the gun. The gun on the Mintoro is 130mm, which is the weirdest kind of gun for a TD. It only does 490 alpha, which is also a weird kind of alpha number for a 130mm gun. Uh, there is a 130mm gun on a bunch of other tanks in the game, but it's not a particularly regular number. 2v2. One of them's a Jaeger Roo, but gets a lovely shot in, and this is where it's brutally efficient. Dumps a second one in, and it's not that it's got a small alpha that surprises. It's the fact that you have such a quick reload on that second shell that you can just dump it out no problems at all and do absolutely brilliant work in situations like that. 3.53 seconds when you're fully buffed up is the reload time between shots. But that's not going to help our Amigo here as he looks for the last tank. And it is, of course, a two-kill TD chilling in the corner. Now, that goes in, but so does the return shot. 506 is not as much damage as you'd expect on that, so he's got lucky with a low roll, and he's now pushing forward. Which is fine, because that's a full reload, and now he's ready to dump all three in. The problem that Ya Big Y has, is that he hasn't got the hit points, despite having six kills, to dump all three in. And our mate, the E75, is very, very slow in terms of, is he coming to help? So slow, in fact, that you'd be forgiven for thinking he's not coming to help. Although we are well up on hit points, 380 hit points to the good, it doesn't matter. Both these tanks are one shots. And with 19 seconds left, you can feel the momentum just inching away. And it's when you have to make, oh, desperate decisions like this that 
split second, but it's all right. The E75 is holding the heavy line. What? He's where, where's the E75? Let's go and have a look at our hero. Best player on the red team, that guy. And that was a draw. That was a debilitating, disappointing draw of a match for Yahusha Ha Mashia from the FAC clan with six and a half thousand damage and a mastery. Still not enough to get the job done. I'm Bushka. There's going to be a lot more tank content coming. Thank you so much for watching. Ivan Rudy Lazaro, go hang your head in shame. Until next time, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.